Dr. P here, sagittal view of the shoulder, talking slap lesions. Let's start out by getting our bearings. You're looking into the glenoid cup, and I'm going to put a little dot on the bare area of the glenoid, which is a normal area of fitting. And this is going to serve as our reference point for our clock or watch. Up top, obvious, Captain Obvious, we've got 12 o'clock. And then I'm going to use the anterior mid as 3 o'clock, also Captain Obvious. And then 6 o'clock on the bottom, and then 9 o'clock over here, and then everything else is self-explanatory. Now, sometimes the cup is tilted. So if the cup is tilted this way, which it often is, then this is going to be your axis. So this is going to be your 12 o'clock, not this. So you always want to be along the long axis of the glenoid when you are making your clock. So let me erase my long axis for a minute here. And let's go back now and talk about the Snyder classification, one through four for slap lesions. And this is pretty easy. I think I need to get rid of my 12 o'clock too. So slap one. Slap one is considered a wear and tear, very shallow, very superficial pattern of fraying along the undersurface of the labrum. It can be somewhat focal and anterior, or it can be broad all the way across. It typically doesn't have a depth of greater than 50% and may occur between the labrum and the glenoid or in the superior labrum itself. It doesn't have a lot of extension much beyond the superior aspect of the labrum, and most of these patients are clinically asymptomatic. In fact, this is considered often in an adult a wear and tear phenomenon, as previously stated. So what's the difference between that and a slap two? A slap two is more like a scissor cut. It's very discreet. It's very linear. It's a bit deeper, greater than 50% depth into the labrum. And it may even go all the way through the labrum. So if you're looking at the labrum in the coronal projection, and this would be your glenoid cup right here, the tear may go all the way through the labrum from bottom to top or from caudad to craniad and then out the top and even result in the propagation of a cyst spilling over the spinoglenoid rim. So if you take a slap one, you make it a little deeper, you make it more well-defined, make it a bit more focal, you've got yourself a slap two. And when you look down at that slap two, say from the top down, it typically is more linear rather than a gap. So if you start to see gapping or widening, then you start to consider something called a slap three, which is basically a bucket handle tear of the superior labrum. Now for these superior labral slap two tears, they could occur only in the back, and when they do, this is known as a slap 2B. They can occur only in the front. This is known as a slap 2A. And if they occur all the way from back to front, this is known as a slap 2C. Then you get the slap tear where you've got a pretty thick tear and you have the yellow, you've got the yellow labrum augmented a little bit. And then you've got some labrum underneath because it's been separated by this huge gap-like tear. So that would be your slap three, and if you're looking down from the top, you'll see a big hole in the middle, just like a bucket handle tear in the knee, and then on either side, you'll see some labral tissue, and this may create what's known as the Cheerio sign, and even though it's not perfectly round, I'd call it a stretched out Cheerio looking from the top down. This would be an axial view, if you will. So that one's the toughest one to conceptualize, but then if you get into something that is slap two-ish or slap three-ish, and now it decides that it wants to have its way with the biceps. In other words, it starts to dissect into the biceps more often longitudinally than horizontally. Now you've got a slap four, and these fulfill the Snyder criteria for slaps one through four, the most noted amongst the slap classification. Let's move on, shall we?